Most of us are aware of what the word extinction means, but fewer people are aware of what the term functional extinction means. Functional extinction is quite a confusing term, as it essentially has three meanings. It can be a species that disappears from the fossil record or historic reports of its existence cease. It can be a species that has a reduced population that no longer plays a significant role in an ecosystem's function. Or it can be a species that has a population that's no longer viable, or has a population of individuals that are no longer able to reproduce, either due to a small population, inbreeding depression or genetic drift. This complicated definition means that one species can be functionally extinct for a completely different reason than another species, and a species can be functionally extinct in one area but not in another. In today's video, I will be going through a few examples of functionally extinct animals, and to find our first example, we will be heading over to China. The South China tiger is a population of the mainland Asian tiger, and it was once native to southern China. This tiger was once abundant across four Chinese provinces, but today it's believed to be extinct in the wild. No individual has been seen in the wild since the 1980s, but they do have a small population in captivity. In the early 1950s, the South China tiger had a population of around 4,000 individuals, but during this time it became a target of the government. Mao Zedong put in place an anti-pest campaign during his Great Leap Forward movement, and he ordered people to shoot and kill these tigers. During this time, many forests were cleared, and this wiped out the tiger's prey and the tigers themselves. Mao Zedong claimed that man must conquer nature, but if any of you know about Chinese history, then you'll know that this didn't end well. During the Great Leap Forward movement, as many as 45 million people died, and this is mainly from diseases and famine. Not only did the Chinese people suffer, but so did these tigers, and by 1982, an estimated 150 to 200 South China tigers remained. Because of their dwindling population, protections were put in place, and breeding programs were started in captivity. 40 purebred South China tigers were kept in 17 Chinese zoos, and this population included 23 adult males and 14 adult females. None of these tigers were wild-born, and all were third or fourth generation descendants of one wild tigress. This meant that there was very little genetic variation, and there was a lot of inbreeding going on to keep the South China tiger alive. There are also some South China tigers in a reserve in South Africa, but today the global population is just over 200 individuals. Because of the reduced genetic diversity of the remaining South China tigers, some of them have been crossbred with other tiger populations, but this is really essential for their survival. There are plans to reintroduce some of these tigers back into the wild, but as they have such a small population and reduced genetic diversity, some experts believe them to be functionally extinct. Personally, I'd love to see these tigers back in the wild once again, but really it looks like an uphill struggle. For our next group of animals, we will be heading out to the ocean, as we will be taking a look at the reef sharks. Instead of looking at one species in particular, I will be grouping all reef sharks together. Sharks play a very important role in marine ecosystems, and on reefs they are the top predators. Sharks have been completely decimated by humans over the past 100 years, and it's estimated that around 80 million sharks are killed by humans each year. Most illegal poaching is funded by China, and this is definitely the case in this situation. Shark fin soup is seen as a delicacy in China, and the demand for it is ever-growing. This means that millions of sharks are killed often illegally, and they are often put back in the water without any fins. The demand for shark fin soup is not the only reason why sharks are killed, as in some poorer areas, fishermen see them as competition, and some spear fishermen see them as a threat. Because of this relentless persecution, a study from 2020 found that sharks are functionally extinct in 20% of the world's reefs. This study found that reef sharks were almost completely absent from reefs in several nations, and in some areas they were so rare that they didn't play a significant role in the ecosystem's function. Reefs that were close to human populations in countries that had poor governance were the worst affected, but thankfully areas such as the Great Barrier Reef still had a healthy shark population. 
It's easy to care about the conservation of cute, lovable animals, but people tend to turn a blind eye when it comes to sharks. Because they're seen as scary and potentially deadly animals, fewer people care about their conservation, but they're essential if you want a healthy marine ecosystem. Hopefully more can be done to help these sharks in the future, because if not, many of the world's marine ecosystems will be doomed. For our final creature, we will be heading over to Panama, as we will be taking a look at the Panamanian Golden Frog. The Panamanian Golden Frog isn't actually a frog at all, as it's actually a species of toad. This toad was endemic to Panama, but today it's believed to be extinct in the wild. It was first described as a subspecies of another very striking toad, but today it is classified as a separate species. It was considered to be one of the most beautiful amphibians in Panama, and that's really saying something as Panama is home to some very striking amphibians. These toads max out at around 6.5 centimeters long, and at this size, they do need to keep an eye out for predators. Luckily, as you might have guessed from its aposomatic coloration, the Panamanian golden frog is toxic. It has a variety of toxins, but its poison has not been tested on humans due to the risk. But large doses proved to be fatal to mice within 20 to 30 minutes. This toad was once found in streams of the cloud forests of Panama, and at one point in time they had a very healthy population. They started vanishing in their native range in the late 1990s, and this prompted a scientific investigation. The last time it was filmed in the wild was in 2006, and this was for a BBC documentary featuring David Attenborough. During this time, the location of filming was kept secret, and this was in an attempt to protect them from poachers. It didn't take long to find out the reason behind their decline, as many other amphibians in the area were facing the same fate. An infectious disease has been wiping out amphibians worldwide, and it's even caused a few extinctions. It's believed that additional factors such as habitat loss and pollution could have played a role in this toad's decline, and because of their dwindling numbers, many of them were taken into captivity. The San Diego Zoo received their first toads in 2003, and since then they have been able to successfully breed over 500 individuals. Currently, there are no plans to reintroduce them into the wild as the disease still remains a threat, and even though there is a healthy number of these animals in captivity, there is a lot of inbreeding taking place. This is why some experts believe them to be functionally extinct, but there is still hope for them yet. If these toads were to make a comeback, it would not only be good for the ecosystem, but it would also be good for the people of Panama, as they are a bit of a national symbol, and they have a place in the local culture and mythology. So even though it's going to be a struggle, their story isn't over yet, and hopefully they'll make a comeback in the future. If you think I should have featured any other creatures in this video, then let me know down in the comments below. But for now, thanks for watching, and until next time, goodbye.